All right, so here's Henry David. What's up, my man? Nice to meet you. And this is the replica raised. It's supposed to be very similar to the one he had built, which was taken down. So let's see how it looks. This is so nice. Oh, I love it. This is amazing. Look at that. So theoretically he built his own with his own bare hands. Like a little bed. So nice! No furniture is actually somewhere else right now. And they have it in a museum somewhere. But to just see this replica like at Walden Pond is kind of amazing. So this would be the, the firewood place. Um, I'm certain he had fancier furniture from what I remember. And then under the bed he would have like things. Here we are, Walden Pond. They've actually turned this into a swimming area. So there's people here actually swimming. It's pretty neat. So this is the site. So Thoreau's cabin would have been right here within these parameters. Hello, little bee. And the layout would have been exactly like the cabin we walked in. So bed, desk. Oh, look, a little mushroom. Wow, like this is it. We are exactly where Thoreau would have been. Like he would be right here in this spot. This is amazing. Oh my God, I'm so happy. I think he touched some of these rocks. In 1872, 10 years after Thoreau's death, his lifelong friend, Bronson Alcott, guided a Walden enthusiast to the house site they place stones here to honor Thoreau's stay at Walden, a tradition that continues on. So it's considered a tradition to place a rock. That's why there's so many kind of one placed on top of the other. This one I think has a marble at the very top or a very colorful rock. What I'm wondering here is, would he have planted his beans right here next to the site? Because the pond is actually not that close. Like it is close, but you know, it's not five steps away. So I'm guessing his gardens would have been here where he would actually plant things to eat. And then if you go down to the pond, the pond is yay down there, which as I've mentioned before, now people are swimming in it. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into a corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. Mm -hmm.